cancer. You look oh, like you look like you were just through the mill. Huh? When I was told I had cancer, first question I asked was if I was going to be able to have children. All you want for your child is for them to be happy, to be healthy, and to have a wonderful life. Thirty-eight years later, now I'm my mother. And my son is the one who's receiving this diagnosis. Right away, what did I do wrong in utero? What, what caused this? And the doctor said, I don't know how to tell a 27-year-old this. Pete, you have ALS. OK, this is what he has. What do we do now? And then he says, I'm sorry to tell you, but we've made no progress in the fight against this disease. I literally said, how can that possibly be? And I got very angry. It was hopeless. It was, there was no hope. Where I was given hope in 1974. Pete said, we're not going to look backwards. We're going to look forward. We're going to change the trajectory of this disease. We went to every ALS event we could get ourselves in front of. There was a panel of four ALS experts. I was watching their body language with each other, and I was hearing words like, oh, you do that? Oh, yeah, well, this is how we do it. They really were projecting that they weren't a united front. I was really starting to steam. I stood up and I said, my name is Nancy Frades, and I remember pointing at him. I'm Pete's mother. Where's the accountability here? I, my question to you is, what are you going to do about this when you leave this room? That's when I knew I could make an impact. Not only was Pete an outlier, I was an outlier. I was the mother of an ALS patient. Here's this kid that was hitting home runs all around Boston, who within a year is in a wheelchair, who can't text anymore, who can't drive his own car. So we made a really conscious decision to tell our story so we can show people exactly what this disease does. We thought about picking up the phone the day after he was diagnosed and just asking people for money. But we knew we would be spinning our wheels because we'd have to explain to them. So Pete has ALS. This is what it is. How are we going to get this to really take root? How do we do this? How do we? grab the attention of the greater public to get awareness for this disease. Pete calls us into his room. He's typing this now. It's called the Ice Bucket Challenge, and we're going to make it for ALS. Pete is now telling us this is it. I support ALS and my friend. When we sat down and I opened up our feed, the first thing I saw was an Ice Bucket Challenge. Within an hour, we started seeing more people doing it. That was the tipping point in the world of ALS. Because a person who's diagnosed with ALS right now has hope where there was none on March 13, 2012. Hope is the greatest medicine. Because if you have hope, you'll wake up tomorrow morning and you'll put the two feet on the ground because you have faith and you believe that you're gonna make it either better for yourself or better for the next person. I'm a mom. I believe everything and every decision I made in my life brought me to this. This is what I can give to the community. This is how I can help move that needle. It's very empowering to tell your story because when you tell your story, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a human response to it. And there's the hope, right? When someone looks at you and says, well, what can I do to help you? My war is against the disease, but hope is the ammunition. If you give people hope, they will fight.